in the light of the financial crash, or the light of the, the, the financial crisis, I think there's a greater emphasis on thinking about you know, what motivates a person you know, beyond uh, you know, naked ambition or beyond um, the, the, the desire to get the next bonus. It really has to be more of a holistic view about what they can contribute to society, what finance contributes to society. It's really interesting. I've spent an awful lot of time with my peer group out in the market, the other HRDs and HR teams, talking about their needs as well as our own within the corporation. And guess what? We, we have similar challenges in which we develop people for the t- typically for their technical skill set and they gradually get promoted and inherit teams that they're then asked to manage. But we haven't equipped them along the way to have those core people skills to be able to support them in that role. And what do I mean by that? How to do performance management well, how to coach people in their career development, how to manage some really difficult discussions potentially around employee relations or legislation, grievances, etc. Um, so what we want to do is really want to upskill them. Our proposal is to do what we call a license to manage, where we will give those people, leaders, not just now, once they're leaders, but before they get to those roles, so we can start equipping them in advance with those core areas and actually make it a badge of honour, pride. This is all about talent management, talent spotting, and recognising that, for example, the people who used to be very good traders are not necessarily going to turn into very good managers and leaders of a trading team. You know, in much the same way that universities have recognised that you can be a very good research academic, but that doesn't qualify you automatically to lead the institution. So a lot of the words that you see around now, and of course um, people involved in recruitment are aware of it, is that's why things like coaching become so important. That's why spotting talent and developing talent become so important. And actually why it's very important to, if you like, rotate stuff. You know, the, the story that people change jobs and change employment every two years nowadays, that's not necessarily bad. You know, the worst thing that we saw in the crisis was people running firms who've just been with the same firm or in the same little clique of firms for their entire career, and you end up with quite narrow thinking, even when you think you're being strategic. That's the drawback, I think. My vision for change is really around really around that diverse diversity of thought. Um, there's a balance that represents the population of the world. There's a balance that represents the users of technology in the world. Um, when we stop talking about women need equal pay and equal representation in their career progression, that will be the vision that I feel like we've actually achieved that. Uh, I think the we're, we're getting to the corner, we haven't turned the corner yet, in that we're seeing much more male support uh, from our, from around this issue. And I think that is something where if I, you know, when we see mediocre women in leadership positions and nobody comments on it, you know, then I think we'll actually reach to a point of equality. You know, having lived through that 2007-2008 financial crisis, working in the financial markets myself, I mean, two things became clear. One thing was that you couldn't explain what was going on out there in the markets just by looking at a finance textbook or an economics textbook. One really had to look across the academic silos, think about the psychology of trading, the emotions of traders, think about the sociology of markets and herding behaviour. So all of those aspects, economics, finance, sociology, psychology, neuroscience even, are brought together in behavioural science. That gives us a better view, a better understanding of what makes people tick and how what makes the market and, and, and uh, economies behave. To be fair, I think it doesn't matter which sector you're in, how traditional it may or may not be reviewed, viewed as, but it's really important that as a leadership team you have role models, sure. and that's not just necessarily women, it's across all areas of diversity. The big change I think that's happened recently is that recognition that actually it's the top leadership of the firm, it's not just have to believe what they're doing, but have to act it, and it's their behaviour, and writing down, you know, the cliche at the moment is behaviours, plural, mm of starting to write down, well, what is it we actually mean by a good employee and a good member of the institution? And that, of course, is where HR plays such an incredibly important part. So it's really implementing, and as I said before, it's, it's an active role. It's not passive. And so it's working, in order to do this well, you need to work with the senior leadership to define what does the firm look like or the organisation look like, and then with the HR teams to implement it. 
And then, of course, the feedback and say, well, is this working or not? You know, it's assessing whether the change program is working mm. is also a challenge, really challenging thing. One of the challenges we have of moving to a more of a global model is trying to bring all those different groups who have had their own way of working into more of a global view. Um, at times, it's removing some very familiar homegrown systems. And by moving on to global systems, we're actually able to bring back to the company more accurate financial results, um, better forecasts. Um, better trend analysis, and also to uh, meet a lot of more regulatory and compliance changes, which we're seeing a, a rapid increase in. Uh, E-commerce is changing a lot of rules in the way that we're selling, the way that we uh, tax locally, the way that we tax internationally. So there's a lot of changes that we constantly have to anticipate. And then layered over on top of that is just how technology changes. Um, the mobility of technology now is has radically changed since uh, within the past 10 years and completely different uh, completely different ways of working for our, our employees